Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about fertilization. Fertilization is an internal process. Fertilization is nothing but the process of fusion between the male sex cell and the female sex cell. That is, in case of human beings, it is the fusion between the sperm and the ovum. So it is an internal process because everything happens internally and this process takes place inside the body of the female. So where exactly inside the body of the female? It occurs in the fallopian tube. Now as I said, by the process of ovulation, a matured egg is released and it remains in the fallopian tube somewhere here. And we have already seen how sperms are produced. So the sperms are produced and the sperms get ejaculated in the vagina. Of the female. So the, these sperms also reach from vagina to the fallopian tube and in the fallopian tube the actual fusion takes place. So let us look at the process of fertilization. So here in this picture I have focused only on the fallopian tube part. So ovum comes from ovary to the fallopian tube as I mentioned before also. So here you can see the ovum is coming out from the ovary to the fallopian tube. Now sperms enter through the vagina. Now the sperms first enter through the vagina during intercourse and they also reach the fallopian tube. So here you can see the sperms have also reached the fallopian tube. Now the sperms are motile so the sperms are capable of moving. So now the sperm enters the egg. So here you can see the sperm enters the egg. Now the moment the sperm enters the egg, the fusion of the nucleus of the sperm and the ovum takes place. So the sperm contains the nucleus, the ovum also contains the nucleus. So as soon as the sperm enters inside the ovum, the, both the nucleus of the sperm and the ovum, they fuse together, they combine together. So this fusion is known as fertilization. So the fusion of nucleus of sperm and ovum is termed as fertilization. And this fertilization results in the formation of a new organism. So now we will see what is the result of this fertilization. Right? Now, another question is that, just now I told you that one matured egg gets released from the ovary every 28 days. Now the question is, that unfertilized egg, I mean before the egg has met the sperm, so will that egg remain alive forever? Will the egg remain al alive for the next 28 days as long as the next egg doesn't get released? No, it is not like that. The lifespan of an egg is very very small. The, from the time the egg got released from the ovary, it will remain alive only for 24 hours, just 24 hours. So if a sperm comes and fertilizes it within this 24 hours, only then fertilization will happen. If the ovum doesn't meet any sperm in the 24 hours, then what will happen to the ovum? The ovum will degenerate itself. So it, it is a very interesting fact. There are so many sperms which get released inside the body of the human male. But out of those so many sperms, only one sperm is enough to fertilize the egg. But this egg will remain alive only for 24 hours. So only within that time, only those 24 hours, a fertilization had to take place. Only then reproduction will actually happen. Right? So it is a matter of chance that whether the ovum will meet the sperm in those 24 hours or not. So then if it meets the sperm, the sperm will enter inside the ovum and the nucleus of the sperm will fuse with the nucleus of the ovum and we say that fertilization has taken place. So this is how fertilization happens. Now what is the result of fertilization? Now once the nucleus of the sperm fuse with the nucleus of the ovum, what, what is formed? The result is that a single celled zygote is formed. So this is the result of fertilization. So first a zygote is formed, then this zygote will undergo repeated divisions. So this is how it happens. So this fusion will happen, it results in the formation of a zygote. So this is the zygote. 
Now this zygote will keep on dividing repeatedly. So more and more division, so more number of cells inside, right? So by repeated division, the zygote will form an embryo. So that zygote becomes an embryo after many divisions. So here in this picture, you can see the fertilization happened. So a zygote is formed here. Now this zygote will undergo more divisions, again further divisions. And then this embryo will descend into the uterus. It will start moving gradually towards the uterus because finally the baby has to implant itself in the uterus. So the embryo de descends into uterus in four to five days. So the process started here. Fertilization started here. So from here till here, it takes around four to five days for this entire process. Okay. So now once the embryo, embryo starts uh, getting inside the uterus, it finally implants it with the wall of the uterus. So you can see that this embryo will plant itself. It has formed some specialized tissue-like structure with the wall of the uterus. And that is how it implants itself here. And then the embryo keeps on growing and gradually it becomes a fetus. And the fetus keeps on growing till nine months. And after nine months, it is born as a baby. Right? So now you know the difference between a zygote, embryo and fetus. Zygote after many divisions gets implanted in the uterus and that is known as embryo. And embryo in its advanced stages of development is known as a fetus. So we normally use the term fetus for an advanced embryo. So now the question is that, okay, fine, after so many divisions, the fetus or the embryo gets implanted in the uterus. But how does that fetus receive nutrition? Who provides food and all other nutrition for the growth of that embryo? So let us see what happens about that. Now there is a specialized structure called placenta, which is formed in eight to nine days. As I said, in four to five days, the embryo starts moving towards the uterus. So in, in a total of eight to nine days, a specialized structure is formed that is called placenta. So this structure actually helps in providing nutrition to the embryo. It is a structure formed by specialized tissues of fetus and uterine wall of mother. Uterine wall means the wall of the uterus. So here you can see, this picture will clearly show it. So this is how the baby or the fetus gets implanted in the uterus. So if you see some tissues of the fetus and some tissues of the uterine wall of mother, they both join together to form this structure called placenta. Now how this structure helps in providing nutrition to the embryo? Now all the nutrients and good things come into the fetus from the mother's blood through this placenta because this placenta is a connection between the mother's body and the fetus body. So it acts as a connection between the two. So all good things come into the fetus from the mother's blood through placenta. Similarly, all waste materials go out from the fetus into the mother's blood through the placenta because even the fetus is also a new living organism now. So the different life processes which we generally talk about, maybe digestion or respiration, so everything is happening inside the fetus as well. So as a result, excretion is also taking place. So there are some waste materials which need to be thrown out. So where will the fetus throw out the waste materials? So those waste materials are also thrown to the placenta and through the placenta, it reaches the mother's blood and from the mother's blood, it is excreted out through the excretory system of the mother. So placenta acts as a link between the fetus and the mother. Now, there is another thing which actually connects the placenta with the fetus. That is called umbilical cord. There is a tube-like structure which is connected from the navel of the fetus to the placenta. So here you can see there is this thread-like structure, a red-blue colored thread-like structure you can see here. Right here you see the structure. So this structure starts from the navel of this fetus and it connects to the placenta. So this tube-like structure actually acts as a connection between the fetus and the placenta. 
so the total development of the baby takes place in around 9 months and baby gets all its nutrients from the mother's body so that is why it is said that when a woman is carrying when a baby is pregnant that means when she is carrying a baby inside her uterus she should get a proper diet she should eat properly because whatever food she eats a part of the food goes to the baby as well through the placenta so we can say that the link between the fetus and the mother is somewhat like this if this is the fetus so the fetus has an umbilical cord which connects it to the placenta and the placenta connects it to the uterine wall of mother so that is how the mother and the baby are connected to each other for the transfer of nutrients to the baby and for the transfer of wastes to the mother bloods. So this is how an embryo gets implanted in the uterus of a female and it gets nutri nutrition. Now normally in human beings the placenta is a flat round structure. So if you look at a placenta it will be the shape is quite round and it is a flat structure. So this was about how a baby gets implanted. Now, thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.